Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Today we're looking at a product I've had requested a number of times now, and that's the Tempertech Sonata HD Pro to my right here. Before I get into that though, I just want to explain why I'm looking a bit silly with this microphone setup here. I've actually got two microphones on today, and that's because I've been sent a wireless microphone for review. Previously, I've been tethered to my camera or my little audio recorder by a, I don't know, three, four meter cord, and it's a real hassle. So I'm keen to try this out. I'll actually produce a review for it for anyone that's interested. And I'd really appreciate you letting me know in the comments if a wireless lapel microphone like this one is something that you're interested in a review of. That will help me to decide whether to go in depth, provide a short review, or do something maybe off cycle, separate from my normal audio reviews. So please let me know in the comments if microphones and wireless microphones are of interest to you. With that out of the way, let's talk a bit more about the Tempertech Sonata HD, or HD Pro actually, because there are two different versions. So this is a 36 US dollar USB dongle style DAC for smartphones, laptops, computers, you name it, depending on the version you buy, it will work across the board. So the big question for today's review is can it stack up to other products like the Abasso DC series and the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red that I've got here? <laughs> At 36 US dollars or about 50 Australian dollars, the Tempertech Sonata HD Pro, and I'm gonna to refer to it as the Sonata from now on, but do recognize it's the Sonata HD Pro that I'm talking about. So the Sonata HD Pro is a very affordable DAC, given that it provides full DSD capabilities in a very small lightweight dongle style contraption. Everything about the Sonata is pretty no frills, but as long as it sounds good, that really doesn't matter. When the Sonata arrives, it comes in a cardboard box and inside the cardboard box is a little metal tin. Now, I don't normally do unboxing videos as such, but I thought it might be interesting to show you this one because the packaging is very basic, but it does everything it needs to do. And what you get in the package is everything that you would need. So as you unpack it all, there's a few layers of protection that are probably a bit unnecessary, but the end result is a little tin with a foam insert and inside that insert are the key bits you need, namely the Sonata HD Pro, which as you can see here is really, really tiny. You then get a micro USB to USB-C cable, although that will probably vary depending on the version of this you buy, and I'll get to that in a second. And they also include, and I'm really pleased they've included this, a USB-A to USB-C adapter. So what that means is you can very quickly switch between using this for your phone and using it for a laptop or a desktop computer. Now I've mentioned versions of this a couple of times, so let me elaborate. The Tempertech Sonata HD Pro is available as either an iOS or an Android version. As I understand it, the Android version will only work on Android and PC. The iOS version will work on iOS and Android and PC. I didn't specifically check the pricing differences, but I think there's just a very small price increase for the iOS version, and that may be for licensing. I also can't comment on the cables available with the iOS version because this is the Android and uses USB-C. I'm not sure how the Thunderbolt connector for iOS may work differently. Having looked at the packaging and the pieces that come with it, let's now talk about the design, the features, and the functions of the Sonata here. But first, with the power of movie magic, I'm gonna clean up the desk a little bit. As you can see with the two devices standing side by side, the Sonata is about the same size as the Dragonfly Red, not including its USB plug section. The Sonata is a little bit narrower. It's also, I think, probably just a little bit lighter as well. Unlike the Dragonfly, the Sonata has on it some volume controls. Now this is really interesting because you've got volume control on the Sonata, but it is only for the internal amplification of the Sonata itself. In my testing with my Android device using USB Audio Player Pro as the app, it didn't affect the volume levels in the application. It only changed the volume levels from the device itself. I did play around with having the volume maxed out and adjusting through the phone versus having the volume low on this and then higher on the phone. And I didn't hear significant sound quality differences, but my sense when using a device like this is I would always max out the volume on the device and use the high quality volume control in something like USB Audio Player Pro to control the volume. Other than the volume controls, everything on this is pretty simple. You've got the micro USB in at one end, you've got the 3.5 mil out at the other. So this is not a balanced DAC, this is a 3.5 mil single ended DAC only. 
And in that respect, it goes up against something like the DCO2 rather than the DCO1. I don't have the Ibasso product here anymore to compare, but based on my memory, I think the Tempotec Sonata HD Pro is comfortably better than the DCO2. It might be comparable with the DCO1, but we're talking single-ended here versus balanced in the DCO1. So I can't really compare exactly, and I'm basing all this from memory. What I can do though shortly is give you a direct comparison to the much more expensive Dragonfly Red. Before I do that though, there's just a couple more features and functions I want to talk about. I referred now a couple of times to the fact that this is the Sonata HD Pro, and that's because on the Tempotech website, you'll actually only see references to the Sonata HD, not the Sonata HD Pro which is quite strange because the HD Pro is available all over AliExpress and yet Tempotech's own website doesn't seem to list it. The difference between the regular Sonata HD and the HD Pro is that this is a full-size dongle unit whereas the regular HD, the non-pro version, is a cable only so it's just a little bit chunkier a cable than this and it's got all of the DAC chip built into one end of it. I haven't heard the standard HD but I would definitely expect this to be a much better sounding unit based on a combination of the price but also the fact that you've got more space for better componentry particularly things like the output stage. They might be using the exact same DAC chip but you've got more space in the HD Pro for extra componentry to improve the ability to interface with the earphones, control power supplies and the like. The final thing I want to mention before we move on is that when you plug in the HD Pro, so you've got your micro USB goes into the HD Pro itself, you've then got your USB-C or Thunderbolt which will go into the phone, and after that you've actually got to plug in your earphones before the DAC turns on. So the phone won't see the DAC until earphones are plugged in. I think that's quite good because it means you could technically leave this connected to your phone in your pocket for instance when you're not using it and only have it power on when you plug in the earphones. That means you're not wasting battery powering up a DAC device like this when it's not in use. Something else I also like about the design is unlike the Dragonflies where you need a separate fly lead of some description, the fact that the Sonata comes with one I really like, the fact that it's detachable I really like as well, it just gives you lots of flexibility to get a longer cable if you want to, to get a different cable if you want to, and the fact that it gives you a lot of flexibility coming out of each jack means you're not going to put too much strain on the different plugs being used. So I really like everything about the design of the HD Pro, it doesn't look flashy, it's got no LEDs or anything like the Dragonfly here, but it just looks and feels of decent quality and for the price, definitely good enough quality. What's more important is the practicalities of the design, I think are spot on. Galaxy S10 Plus, which has got a decent onboard DAC, to the Sonata HD Pro, I found that the Sonata brought a notable level of improved clarity. The base got a little bit tighter, but it was more importantly on the top end where I noticed an increase in the level of resolution I was perceiving from the music being played back. Recognizing that the S10 Plus has a decent sound output through the headphone jack, it's worth noting that the Sonata is going to be a significant upgrade on most laptops and computers where the basic sound card is often pretty terrible. So to summarize all that, what I'm saying is if you've got a phone with a decent headphone output, and I'm not talking something like an LG G7 with the quad DAC, I'm talking about normal smartphones with generic DACs, this Sonata is going to be an upgrade over those, maybe slight, maybe decent, but it's going to be an excellent upgrade for most computers. There's nothing overly notable about the sound, and that's a good thing. It's just clean, it's well delivered, it comes across as detailed, and a good balance in the frequency range. So far for 36 US dollars, there's really not anything to dislike about the Sonata HD Pro. The other question you might want an answer to is how powerful the Sonata HD Pro is. So I tried a bunch of different earphones and headphones with it just to see what its volume range was like. Keeping in mind for this test, I had the Sonata maxed out through the onboard hardware buttons and I was using the volume control in USB Audio Player Pro on my Android phone. I began testing with the AudioFly AF1120 Mark II IEMs, which are moderately sensitive. They're not a crazy sensitive IEM, but they're a good middle of the road reference to see what IEMs are gonna be like with the Sonata. 
Firstly, there's no background noise as you'd expect for a device like this. They're normally built to suit IEMs and this is no exception. So there was no background noise and I was comfortably listening at a volume of around about 30% on the volume control. So there's plenty of headroom available, but also there's enough range in the volume control that you're not just getting one or two steps before it's getting too loud. You've got some room for adjustment. From there, I stepped up to something a bit larger in the Cost Porter Pros and they required about 40% volume for a roughly the same level of listening. So I didn't volume match these, but I was just turning it up to a level that was comfortable and enjoyable to listen to. That probably means it's peaking around 80, 82 decibels knowing my normal tastes. So at that level, it was about 40% on the volume control with the Sonata maxed out. After that, I threw a bit more of a challenge at it, starting with the HiFiMan HE4XX. This was actually a really nice pairing. The treble quality from the Sonata, which I'll talk about in a second further, it seemed to really suit the HE4XX and overall made a really enjoyable combo. In terms of volume levels, I was using about 65 to 70% volume. So there was still good headroom, but it's worth noting that if you're someone that does listen particularly loud, you are starting to get to the upper end of the range because if you're a loud listener, you're probably gonna be creeping up to 80, 85% volume. That's not the end of the world, but recognize this is not a fully powered desktop type device or even a dedicated headphone amp. So expecting it to drive difficult headphones to very high levels is probably not reasonable. If you're like me and you listen at say that 80 to 85 decibel mark or lower, the Sonata can do a perfectly good job. It's not getting as much out of those headphones as a desktop unit, but it's going to do a decent job for around the house and sitting in the office type listening. The final headphone I tried with it was the DT880 250 ohm, the black version that I reviewed recently. And once again, the Sonata managed pretty well. The sound was maybe a little bit thinner than I expected, given what I'm used to from desktop units, but it was okay, it was very listenable. And again, I was sitting at about 65 to 70% volume. So all in all, just to recap, I think the Sonata is fine for sensitive and normal type headphones. So say 30 to 50 ohm headphones with moderate sensitivity, and I'm just giving rough numbers here, don't get too hung up on them. But the point being, normal dynamic driver type headphones of moderate sensitivity are going to be fine with the Sonata. Where things will get a little bit trickier is with really high impedance or low impedance planers where either current or voltage levels start to become a bit more demanding. It doesn't mean you can't use them, but just don't expect the absolute peak out of those extreme devices. I mean extreme in terms of sitting at the extremes of either impedance or sensitivity levels or both. So from here, what we've seen is we've got a 36 US dollar DAC that's performing pretty well. It produces a good upgrade on the sound quality from a, a normal onboard sound card in a computer or indeed a smartphone like the Samsung S10 Plus. And it can drive most headphones that you're likely to use on a device of this level. Putting it up with something like an HD800 or even some of the difficult hi fi and planers is probably not the right approach. And ideally, if you're spending that sort of money on headphones, you're gonna want better source quality than this anyway but so far it's performing well for the price point it sits at. And that of course begs the question, how does it stack up against a competitor that's priced significantly higher? So I put it up next to the Dragonfly Red and I was pretty impressed with the Sonata overall. Tonality wise, they were very, very similar. One of the first things I noticed was that the Sonata seems to have just a little bit more gain than the Dragonfly Red. Now, I don't know if that means it's putting out more voltage as such, or if it's just got a different gain set up. But I did find that if I left the settings of the phone exactly the same, and I changed between the devices, I was getting just a touch more volume out of the Sonata than I was out of the Dragonfly Red. That doesn't necessarily equate to the ability to drive headphones better or worse. It could just be a gain level thing and have nothing to do with power capabilities. Given that the Sonata is comfortable across the range of headphones and IEMs I spoke about before, what's more important is the sound quality once it's driving these headphones. And what I found was that I'd say the Sonata was around about 80 to 85% as good as the Dragonfly Red. Now that's pretty impressive. Given that a Dragonfly Red costs 200 US dollars compared to 36 US dollars, you're getting a lot of bang for buck with the Sonata. But do keep in mind, it's not as good of a product. Where it does fall short is the Dragonfly Red is a bit more refined with the treble, whereas the Sonata can get a little bit edgy in the treble from time to time. On top of that, the Dragonfly Red is able to provide a slightly better sense of space in the overall reproduction as well. And finally, despite having a slightly edgier or harsher sounding treble, and it's, it's very slight, but it's worth noting, despite having that slight bit of harshness in the treble, what I found was that the Sonata had what I've written down is a slightly blunted sound. And I think what that comes down to is its overall sense of dynamics 
and energy and rhythm that comes across in the reproduction. So the Dragonfly Red is just a better version of the Sonata essentially. It does everything just a little bit, you know, that 15-20% that better, but the end result is a more enjoyable listening experience. Don't forget also, the Dragonfly Red does do MQA, whereas the Sonata doesn't. So if that's important to you, you need to factor that in as well. Having said all that, I'm not in any way knocking the Sonata. For me, the Sonata HD Pro is what a cheap USB dongle device should be. If you've seen my review of the DCO1 and the DCO2 from my Basso, you'll know that I really wasn't impressed. The balanced version, the DCO1, was okay, but I really expected more. The Sonata HD Pro, on the other hand, is everything I expected and better because at the price, it's just performing way better than it deserves to. As is often the case, putting them side by side, you can hear why you would spend more money on the Dragonfly Red, but at the same time, the question has to be asked, is it worth spending 200 US dollars instead of 36 US dollars? That's a huge jump for about a 15 to 20% sound quality improvement. If it were me, I'd be making that decision based on what you're using it with and the situations in which you're using it. If you're going to be sitting in quiet locations with a good pair of IEMs or headphones, then the Dragonfly Red is probably worth the extra investment. If you're going to be using it when you're out and about commuting, maybe you're listening to podcasts or audiobooks, and it's not so much about musical fidelity, then there is absolutely no reason to spend extra on the Dragonfly Red. The Sonata HD Pro is just fine. So if you're in need of a bargain USB dongle DAC and try saying that three times fast, the Tempotech Sonata HD Pro is a great option. I'm yet to come across anything that I think beats it in terms of price and sound quality. So for me, it's an absolutely easy recommendation. Yes, you will get more if you spend more money, but you do have to spend quite a lot more money before you beat the Sonata here. If that sounds interesting to you, I'll place a link down below where you can go and check out more about the Sonata HD Pro and pick one up for yourself. For now though, happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Music